Hello everybody, Dan Keffler here. I've got a little project that I'm working on. Um, I've got a bunch of projects that I'm working on uh, with the, the not so much spare time that I have. But um, this is kind of interesting and I thought uh, maybe some people on YouTube would be interested in this as well. Uh, one of the things I've been doing is I've been testing different steels um, with the Blade Sports uh, cutting competitions. And that's been giving, uh, it's been over the last few years, been a great testing ground for different materials and stuff. Uh, CPMM4 has been a steel that, that I, I believe wasn't really popular for knives until we started using it in cutting competitions. And it's, it's done some, some really good things uh, as, a, as a steel uh, for cutting competitions because of how thin we can run it uh, and still maintain uh, uh, an acceptable level of durability with as thin as we're running the edges and stuff. So, a couple uh, one steel that I've been uh, working with for uh, actually over two and a half years now uh, in different forms, but I've made two competition choppers out of is uh, Venetus Four Extra. It's a Buller Udahom steel, and it's a steel that I really looked into because of uh, a, a, a different group of properties that uh, it it has some characteristics that it has that uh, lend itself to being a great competition cutter. Now. Um, to sum up what, what my impression of it is, so here's, here's a competition blade out of Venetus 4 Extra and I've got another knife that's completed out of this steel. Um, it is able to go thinner and harder and still be more durable than pretty much any other steel um, I've uh, tested. And so now I'm, you know, doing some experimentation just to kind of see what its limitations are because uh, it's been able to survive, uh, you know, some use and abuse that, that CPMM4 and 3B um, haven't, haven't been able to withstand regarding uh, what type of uh, damage that we would get from, from different mediums and stuff. Um, so like a specific example would be if I take... Uh, my edge down to the thickness that I normally take it down to and then sharpen it, you know, uh, 30 degrees inclusive, uh, 15 per side, and then, you know, just cut multiple 2 by 4s and go through similar things like a cutting course and everything. We can only take the edge so thin before it's real likely that you, you'll ripple the edge or even chip. But I've been able to take this thinner than any other steel that I've used, and it's maintained its rigidity, so I haven't rippled the edge and I haven't chipped it uh, in the in the test knife that I've been using uh, for about a year and a half now, or a little over a year and a half. So, one of the ways when I when I make one of these choppers and stuff, I end up with different chunks of steel, like what we call drops and everything. So I've got um, some pieces set up here. And I've made identical thickness pieces, and then I'm going to go back and grind them. So these are heat treated, but they're actually done with different heat treat protocols. And uh, some are finished out with a Rockwell of 64, and some are finished out with a Rockwell of 62. And I'm taking these down, to, um, these are taken down to pretty much a zero ground edge. It's actually a hollow ground, zero ground edge. Um, and we're going to sharpen them like straight razors and uh, see if... Uh, you know, how they fail, when they fail, and, and what, what type of properties we get out of the edges. And that'll give me an idea, you know, if I want to alter the heat treat with a chopper, or if I want to, you know, alter the heat treat if I'm using Venetus 4 Extra for specific knives uh, and, and their purpose. So what I'm doing for this experiment is, you can see, obviously, because of the different tempering cycles, um, there's two different protocols here that we're testing. Now the reason why I'm doing multiples is because I'm actually sending uh, some of these out to some professional sharpeners and I want their feedback based off what type of edge they can get on these pieces and um, when they use them if they can you know tell a significant difference in edge holding capability or edge failure how the edge fails and uh, you know whether we're getting you know what we call carbide tear out, or we're chipping, or we're just, you know, the, the, the primary, I mean, the, the cutting edge is rolling over, um, or if it just doesn't work at all. So, get some of that feedback, and then I've got 
a couple like little so Japanese style these Japanese blades. style blades here that um, I'll also uh, sharpen up and stuff. Um, once I get some feedback and once I get to utilize these, especially with some of the new sharpening systems that I'm working with, uh, I get a more more of an idea of like, um, what type of potential this steel has. Um, as is, you know, with the basic heat treat that we've done um, with the competition chopper, um, more of a conservative heat treat because the, the material was really hard to get. Uh, I'm really impressed with it, really satisfied with um, just just the overall performance characteristics of the steel, the, the, the type of performance that I can get out of it. Um, it's not, uh, you know, with cutting competitions, you know, as, as long as the knife survives the, the competition, uh, you know, with with an acceptable level of sharpness, you, you could do just fine, but um, I've just been real impressed with how much uh, uh, use this knife, the, the knife that I've been testing, has been able to take with uh, with novices and, uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, really experienced cutters, um, and just how well it's been able to hold up and how it just hasn't really shown any sign of, of damage and stuff. So, um, that's about the end of this video. That, that gives you an idea of uh, some of the things I do when I'm testing out steels and uh, you know it, it, it's a long process to actually figure out um, what you know I consider the ideal heat treat for the type of uh, properties that I'm looking for for the steel and sometimes the heat treat varies according to the size of the blade and what the blade's going to be used for uh, and that's something that Brad Stallsmith and I work on uh, on a regular basis. We have a lot of phone conversations and I've been over to Pennsylvania a couple of times and you know at the at the facility there and we just kind of uh, brainstorm and work through just ask different questions you know what if how can we make this better or what what can we expect if we change these temperatures or this soak time or this you know uh, all these different variables and uh, we've been doing that with CPM 3V for uh, it started working with Brad in 2005 so almost 10 years and um uh, you know, we've got it to a point where I'm really satisfied with the type of performance I get out of it and the all-around performance. And then we've done that with M4 quite a bit. We're working with PD1 and, and then this Veneta Spore Extra. Um, I also have Brad Heat Treat, uh, my um, AEBL that I'm using for kitchen cutlery. He, treat, he treats LMAX for me sometimes, but I'm, I'm getting away from LMAX. Uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully you find this video interesting. and. Um, I'll uh, give you guys updates on uh, how this this experiment works out.